I hope you are all doing well today. Just let me know in the chat if you can all hear me and see me. Lovely. All right, let's, uh, let's get straight into it today. Um, so uh, this uh, topic that I've, I've selected today was actually suggested by some of you guys. Oh, by the way, you'll notice that I'm in a slightly different room. The studio is in use at the moment. So I, I, I have to use the boardroom today for the session. Uh, so I just apologize if there's a little bit extra noise or, or echo. Uh, but I hope it won't be, won't be too bad. Now, as I was saying, right, um, the topic for this session uh, was actually suggested by you guys uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and even in the, the student webinar that we did uh, about two weeks ago, it was brought up. So I decided, you know what, let's just take a stab at it. Um, cool. All right. I see everything is fine with the audio. Lovely. Cool. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn uh, and specifically how to set up a, a good quality profile that uh, engages with potential clients, potential employers, and, and resonates with people. That it, it basically does its job effectively. It puts your message out there and advertises you in a way that's going to catch people's interest. Um, now, there's a lot of guides out there on how to do this. Uh, so, but what I feel most of them get wrong is they overcomplicate it and try to oversell their approach. Uh, it really, setting up a, a LinkedIn profile is, is, is super simple. There's just a few basic things you got to get down and you are in business. Um, so today what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to use uh, Bilal's uh, LinkedIn as my uh, analysis. Uh, I'm not going to use mine because it's, it's, it's bad. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been on LinkedIn in a long time. Uh, so I'm just going to use someone else's just for demonstration uh, purposes. So let me uh, start off by sharing my screen. Just let me know when you guys can see it. Uh, there we go. Okay, let me know if you guys can see that now. Lovely. All right. Cool. So let's take it from the top right when it comes to uh setting up a, a linkedin profile uh by the way again can you guys see me as well when i'm sharing my screen or is it just the screen i can't remember how this works all right cool perfect um yeah so when it comes to your linkedin profile the first and obviously the most important thing i think the the thing that's going to be a make or break for your your profile is this big section at the top, your, your information section, right? So when you start off with your with, uh, with, with setting up or, or overhauling your LinkedIn profile, put, put emphasis here, right? Because this is like your, your cover photo. If it's not good, people are going to open your profile, just glance at it and, and, and move along to, to someone else. So make this really, really attractive. Uh, how? Well, First and foremost, a good quality profile picture. That is critical. I, I'd say, um, you know, the, in, in online marketing, right, there's a term called uh, bounce rate, uh, which is when you're running an ad online, like on Facebook or Instagram, um, and you get people clicking on your ad, right? And they land on your, on your website, on your homepage. Uh, there is a term called uh, uh, Unashi, can you not see my screen? Um, is anyone else having trouble viewing my screen? Let me know before I, I proceed. Okay, looks like it might just 
Oh, all right. I'm not sure what the problem might be there. Well, Nancy, maybe try uh, jumping out and then uh, jumping back in, see if that fixes it. Cool. So as I was saying, right, you have an ad. Um, people click on that ad and they land on your on your page, right? Now there is a term in marketing known as a bounce rate. That's when someone lands on your page, they stay there for just a few seconds, and then they close your page and never come back, right? Now that's terrible when it comes to to marketing because it means that. Your ad was engaging enough. It, it it made people click through, but then when they landed on your on your landing page on your website, they weren't exactly thrilled with what they saw, and so immediately the impression they got was that this isn't very good, and they leave. Right. The same is true with your uh, LinkedIn profile. There's something called you you can uh, you can imagine that the exact same principle applies here. The bounce rate. So. You someone sees your profile, it's either sent to them in a link or they're doing a search and your, your name comes up, they click on it, they look at your profile, immediately they get the impression that this isn't good and they close, right? That's the bounce rate of your profile. And I would say the biggest cause of this bounce rate is profile picture. If your profile picture isn't good, it's an instant turnoff for almost anyone coming onto your profile and they're going to leave without really checking out the rest. The rest could be 10 out of 10, right? 11 out of 10 even. But if that picture isn't good, you're going to have a lot of people just come in and bouncing out. So what makes a, a good profile picture? Number one, high quality. Don't, don't upload blur pictures. Number two, appropriate... Um, uh, appropriate attire, right? So look at Bilal's um, profile picture here. Number one, it's it's crystal clear. Number two, he's dressed professionally, right? So you get the impression that he's, he's a professional. This is a professional account after all. You know, I see a lot of accounts with people, you know, with like selfies that you would post on your Instagram. It might not necessarily be a bad quality picture, but it's it's not really appropriate for uh, for LinkedIn. Right? LinkedIn isn't a, a that type of social media. It's it's it has a specific purpose, and that is professional networking. So put a professional look in a picture, right? And the third thing that uh, I think is 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 very important is the background. Uh, Will this recording be available to watch later? Yes, it is. Uh, every single webinar uh, goes on to the YouTube channel. So generally by Wednesday uh, evening, uh, it'll be it'll be uploaded there. So you can always catch the recording of it later. Is the student webinar also uploaded? Let me double check. Huh? I'll double check with the with the production team if if they've uploaded that one. So yeah, now the final points with the with the profile picture is a clear background, not too busy, not too chaotic. Um, so you know, just in the suggestions over here, uh, looking through it, notice that the ones that catch your eyes, right? This guy, I would say, is a good profile picture. These two are okay, right? But the problems that they have is they are. The, the backgrounds are a bit busy, a bit chaotic, and the person is a little too far away. So when you're looking at this, this highlights the other similar profile section, you can't really make out their faces, right? Um, and so that it, it makes their profile picture look a little less attractive. Now you might think that, you know, it's just a profile picture, right? It does the job. I'm digging a little too deep into it, right? And maybe, maybe that's true, but in my opinion, right, the rest of your account doesn't have to be put under so much scrutiny, but I would think that profile picture, you should be very careful with how you choose because look, it's, it's, it's a lot of the time, right? This is human psychology when you're on the internet browsing through profiles. It's like window shopping. You're not really going to give uh, a lot of attention to each and every profile picture you see, right? 
as you're scrolling, if it doesn't catch your eye instantly, it's gone and you're going to keep scrolling, right? Um, it's a different case if you have a big name and, you know, people are going to come looking specifically for you or someone with your qualifications. But I'm, I'm talking about specifically as a student or a, a, a fledgling business owner trying to, to network and build a name for yourself on LinkedIn, put as much uh, emphasis as you can on that profile picture because it's otherwise people are just going to potential leads potential customers uh, potential employers are really just going to scroll past without really giving it a second thought that's just unfortunately how not just linkedin but social media works so i would say that put a lot of emphasis on your profile picture good quality professional attire clear background and with a fourth point is, is, is a close-up, right? Let's see your face and have a happy, smiling expression on at the same time. The second image that you have in this section is the banner image. This isn't as important, right? Uh, and you don't have to put anything specific. So you can see Bilal just has this. Uh, I think this is one of the, I'm pretty sure this is one of the, the banner images that LinkedIn uh, gives you. Uh, so yeah, don't put too much emphasis there. It's not as important. Uh, but just don't leave it blank because then it looks a little tacky or don't put like a blur image, right? Just put something simple like this. It looks classy. It looks elegant. It does exactly what it needs to do. You don't need to do anything more with that. Right. Now, moving on. This section here, your, your blurb, that's what I like to call it. It's just a short little write-up about you or your business. This is also very important, right? So, uh, someone sees your profile picture, they like it, they click on it. That's going to be the first thing they read. So make it short, but make it very, very impactful. Um, so normally what people would do is they just put their job description there. Uh, you know, manager at so-and-so or founder at so-and-so uh, company. That doesn't really cut it. It doesn't say much. It's, it's, it's accurate, right? But it doesn't really say much. Remember, this isn't a, a LinkedIn profile isn't like a, a directory where it's just supposed to give information. At the end of the day, it's used for networking, it's used for marketing yourself and your business. So it, it needs to follow the same principles that you would use when marketing, right? And so, you know, pretend that your business or your, 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 your personality is a product sell it right put in the extra work the extra effort you can use chat gpt to help you with wording but sell yourself properly right so look at bilal right helping people to grow through authentic learning founder of it varsity come learn with us right three short sentences but i think it's 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 a very a very sweet um little blurb right it's he could have just had founder of it varsity plain and simple but that doesn't really mean anything to anyone. It's what what is IT varsity? Why should I care? You know, that's that's the question. Um, but this adds a whole lot of personality to it. So it, it explains yeah what his position is, but it also tells a little bit about his personality, about his views on certain things, about his his goals and ambitions, right? It's a holistic little blurb. So put a little bit of effort into this, word it properly get chat gpt to you can you know you can just feed it with some prompts describing your position and what you're passionate about and have it generate some uh some options for you go through them select the best one touch it up a little bit if you need and then use it don't just put your your position um or your your, your job description that's far far too uh simple all right. Once you get that section down, now that is basically your your little profile section complete, right? Now it's time to move on to the rest of your profile. Uh, the about section. This is like now an extension of the blurb, right? So whatever you spoke about there, here is where you can dive a little bit deeper into it and give a little bit more details. Uh, and expand on on what you what you introduced yourself as in in the blur. Here also, take your time with it and create a beautiful little about section. Nothing too long. 
you're going to scare people away, but make it impactful, right? So not too short either. Make sure it covers all of the points. So here, if you're just looking for employment, you'll talk about yourself, your journey, your passions, uh, and your goals. You know, give a nice overview of yourself. And if you go the entrepreneurship route and you have a business profile, uh, or you promote in your business on your profile, you'll talk about your businesses as well. But add a nice twist to it, right? Don't just come straight out. For example, right, you you have a freelance web design business. Your about section can, you know, like some of the most simplest one I see is, uh, you know, we are an online um, web design business. We develop uh, world-class websites to help small businesses reach their audiences, right? Pretty simple, covers all the points, horrible. Don't, don't, do, don't do that, right? It's, it's way too simple. It doesn't really tell anything. Again, it's accurate, but you're not aiming for accuracy with a LinkedIn profile. It is a social media after all. So you, you, you need to sell it, right? Nobody is going to really be keen after they hear that. So I mean, all right, let's look at uh, uh, Bilal, right? Knowledge leads to growth and opportunities. Start learning today. At IT Varsity, I bring you the most relevant and authentic learning that it, that is learning that A, is current and will enable you to unlock opportunities and B, is delivered by experts in the field with many years of experience. I personally go and find these experts and bring them to you. Learn with us, IT Varsity. And then he has the URL, idiversity.org, right? He could have just said, idiversity is an online training provider. We, we, we train uh, people in web design and development skills and, and could have left it as that. But it doesn't really sell it, right? And I'll be honest with you, maybe two or three years ago, that's exactly what we would have done, right? Uh, but during that time, there's been a lot of learning that we've done, specifically when it comes to uh, social media and online marketing and what we found is is this accuracy isn't really important it's about storytelling right there's actually a whole field uh, or subfield of social media marketing and online marketing called storytelling and copywriting it doesn't sound like it would exist in online marketing but really so much of marketing, whether it's a short little post you're doing or whether it's an article or whether it's the about section on your profile, so much of it is about storytelling, right? Especially if you're marketing a business, right? People don't buy into your business or your services that you're offering. They buy into you, you as a person, as an individual, right? And the only way you can convince them of that is not just through a generic description of what you do but it's creating a story around that about who you are what you stand for and what you aim to do and what you can achieve right and so yes yeah, storytelling just when you're creating your about section when you're writing it make sure you understand that right keep that in the back of your mind you, you're here to tell a story not just describe who you are right tell a story about yourself um and the other thing to be mindful about when you're constructing your about section is keywords. Make sure to include common keywords that are, you know, related to your industry. By that, I don't mean buzzwords, right? A lot of people just spam their about section full of buzzwords, you know, trending catchphrases at the time. That's not what I mean, right? That's actually going to do the opposite. But keywords is is more subtle. Just in your about section, just sort of keep those relevant words there. That is a second field of online marketing uh, called SEO, search engine optimization. So organically, if someone is searching around LinkedIn or even on Google for someone in your field, your profile needs to have the keywords that they are likely to use in their search. So when they hit enter and they hit the search, your profile is optimized for those keywords. It has those keywords. So it'll be highly recommended, right? For example, if you uh, web web design, you know, with WordPress, keep those words, you know, WordPress development in your profile. So if someone is searching on LinkedIn for WordPress developer, those keywords are 
ex are already there in your profile. So LinkedIn is going to be more likely or Google is going to be more likely to suggest your profile higher up, right? That is called search engine optimization. Uh, these terms, uh, write them down. And I, I don't, we don't really have the time in a webinar to go and talk uh, or, or dig deeper into each one. Maybe at some point we'll get Zach to join us. That's his field. Uh, but write them down and go and look into them a little bit later. They are extremely, extremely important uh, in the internet space, whether it's social media marketing, whether you're a web designer, uh, whatever it is, make sure to go and look into these. So the two that we, we covered was copywriting and storytelling. The second is search engine optimization. Uh, sounds a bit heavy just for a social media platform, but <laughs> what I'm doing is um, giving you advice on how to set up an accurate or a, a good quality uh, social media profile on LinkedIn, but I'm tying it to actual real world marketing concepts that are used globally, right? Just so you see that it's really the same thing, right? Uh, although it's presented in a different form as a social media profile, but really what, what, what is it that you are trying to achieve with a LinkedIn profile? You're trying to network and market yourself. So at the end of the day, it's, it's a form of social media marketing. So the exact same concepts are going to apply. So treat it as if it's a full-on marketing uh, a marketing venture of yours. Um, okay, we are running out of time uh, and I don't believe I'm even halfway through. So let me just try to uh, power through the rest, right? Th this section is the most important at the end of the day, the, the profile section and your about section. That's what's going to catch people's eye and help them make up 90% of their mind uh, about you. Uh, before we go on, let me just check if we have any questions. I see William just posted one through. What are the advantages of getting the premium version of LinkedIn and how much does it cost? If we do not buy the premium version, what are we missing out on? Is the free version good enough or not? Uh, okay, good question. Excellent, excellent question. Um, what are the advantages of getting the premium version? Okay, so number one, it gives you a few extra features on your profile, a few extra extra uh, things you can fill in. Uh, it helps your, your profile network a little bit better. So it puts you in front of more relevant people. It recommends more relevant people to you and you get some creator tools, right? So when you are writing articles or publishing videos, it gives you some, some benefits with those and gives your posts more publicity. Uh, if we do not buy the premium version, are we missing out on anything? Not necessarily, right? If you can afford the premium and it fits within your, your strategy, uh, like if you're doing it specifically for a business role, I'd say go for it. But I, I don't think you're gonna be you're gonna be lacking anything major if you don't, especially if you're just an individual or a graduate, right? Uh, it, it, I don't think it's essential that you need it to 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 be successful uh, on LinkedIn or to be have your your profile be successful. And is the free version good enough? It's it's more than good enough. Uh, the, the vast majority of people out there use the 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 free version. Uh, the premium version it offers some benefits again. So if it fits within your strategy, if it's something you want to invest in, you see that LinkedIn marketing specifically is something that you want to follow through on and you foresee being successful for you, then you can go in and invest in it. Uh, but it's not a requirement, right? In fact, what I would suggest is start off with the free tier and experiment with it, right? See how far you can take it and see if it's giving you any returns. If it is giving you returns, then it's worth uh, going and uh, investing into approximately how much is the premium version let's see if we can actually figure that out here on linkedin right they must have it somewhere i'm i'm not entirely sure okay no it's asking me to sign in i I'll, I'll double check that and let you know i i'm i'm really not sure uh, how much 
the premium version is. I think it would probably be around, um, uh, I think 50, I mean, Kegul, it says 800. Okay, that is way, way more than I thought. I was going to think, uh, say it was it was about 80 rands a month. So 800 rands per month. Okay, so that, that is a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, the the the, <laughs> the benefits that it's giving you better be worth it if you if you're spending uh that much on it. Um, okay, I seem to have lost the profile, and now LinkedIn doesn't want to. Uh, uh, there we are. Okay. Oh, it doesn't want to let me view it anymore until I sign in. Okay, never mind. We'll just stop sharing for now. Either ways, I think we are wrapped up with that. Um, right, so after your about section, the sections underneath that are your education uh, section. Uh, there, I guess the most important thing is just to be extensive. Don't leave anything out. You know, I never had a formal qualification, right? I studied the same course that you guys have um, and that was like the only formal qualification I've had so I kind of left my LinkedIn section empty because I thought it wasn't really impressive enough to put on there but the opposite is true the shorter courses that you study also and you get a certificate for put them on there right it it shows that you have a passion for for what you do and a passion for learning uh, and growing yourself in a personal capacity. So anything and everything you study, even if it's a short little Udemy course or a free course that some YouTuber created, put it, right? It's not going to hurt anyone. Uh, and then the second section that's very important is your your experience. If you have any, put it there. If not, leave it, uh, leave it empty. But again, don't short sell yourself and think that the specific role that I did wasn't really impressive enough, so I'm gonna leave it out. Put it in, it's free to put it in, right? Uh, if, it, if it's like a short little internship you did somewhere or a single site you developed for someone, even if it's just a friend, put it, right? It's not gonna hurt. Uh, and then at, underneath that, you have your skills section. So this is different from the education. This is now specifics, right? Uh, you put in any type of skills and experience that you have. So again, don't, don't generalize. Uh, if you are an avid web developer, break it down, right? Um, put WordPress. If you've done WooCommerce, put WooCommerce. Uh, if you've done WordPress, I mean, uh, web design using a framework like, like Bootstrap or something, put that as well, right? Don't lump everything up into a single, uh, a single buzzword and, and leave it there, right? You short selling yourself because sometimes people are going to go to profiles looking for specific skills, right? I need a WordPress developer or I need someone to help me with my WooCommerce site. So be specific, right? And with each of your skills, LinkedIn has this cool feature called recommendations. Uh, I think it's called recommendations, but basically, um, with the skills that you list, you can ask people to vouch for you. So people that you've worked with or your colleagues or your fellow students, you can ask them to go and vouch for that specific skill. So then they go and like basically approve it. Like, yeah, okay, this person does in fact know WordPress. And that shows up on your profile. So when someone comes and sees that you're a WordPress developer and you have like 15 or 20 uh, people that have vouched for you, right? That's, that's very, very powerful. And you guys are in a perfect space to take advantage of that, right? You've got IT Varsity, you've got your student channels, put your profiles together, A, uh, B, go and have your us and your fellow students critique it, let you know if there's anything you can improve, and C, put your list of skills together and have your, your fellow students here go and vouch for you, right? Because you've all started in the same course, you're all picking up on the same skills, go ahead and and help each other out in that cross-pollination, right? And finally, I guess the point we'll close off on is once you have your LinkedIn profile set up, don't just leave it there, right? It's not for display purposes. You're actually going to have to use it. Uh, and by that, I mean, 
uh, number one post. Remember, LinkedIn isn't just about the profiles. It's a social media app. Uh, so it's all about posting. So write articles, create videos, and post them on your profile. It's going to improve the quality of your profile. It's going to bring people to your profile. Two, follow like the popular accounts and the trends in your industry and share posts from those on your profile as well. And thirdly, comments. Go on to posts that are common and relevant uh, in your industry and comment on them, right? Offer your, your insights. That's just going to put you in front of a lot more people and bring a lot more traffic onto your profile and it's going to help your profile grow, right? So make sure you're actually using your account. Um, and finally, and most obvious, grow your network, right? Ne uh, LinkedIn is all about connections. Um, when you, when you, when someone is viewing your profile, they're basically going to come there because someone they know knew you, you know, that's how LinkedIn kind of works. When I come across a profile on LinkedIn and I see, okay, they, they, uh, they have a common link with someone that I worked with some time ago. That's a big plus for me, right? Because it means like it's in the same circle. So I'm more likely to reach out to that person. Um, so yeah grow your connection list as much as possible. Make sure to add your fellow students again. Make sure to add IT Varsity stuff. I remember, I, if I remember correctly, all of us, or all of us should be on LinkedIn. Uh, so, you know, you got myself, Bilal, Zach, Masi, Nol, who you, uh, you guys are very, very familiar with. Add us as well onto your, your, your LinkedIn connections. And yeah, just make sure you are consistent. Try to post or interact at least twice a day and you'll see your LinkedIn profile will grow and a lot of leads will come from there. Even us as a business, a lot of leads that we generate and a lot of partnerships we, we've built over the years started off as LinkedIn posts. In fact, with some of the courses you guys are doing, uh, we needed uh, subject matter experts to come in and design the curriculum and record the specific videos on specific topics. For example, like Python, right? Internally, we didn't really have a Python developer who was uh, of a high enough skill level to design this whole course. So we go on LinkedIn and we find people there and we reach out to them, set up meetings and we take it from there. And it ended up with them coming on board and designing these courses for us, recording them. And now you guys are learning from them. So LinkedIn is very, very powerful for all sorts of businesses and for all sorts of arrangements, for all sorts of people that you're looking for. So make sure you take full advantage of it. Uh, let me just go through the final uh, questions. I see there's quite a few, quite a bit of activity in the chat. Uh, William asked, what kind of experience should we put on? If we do a short crash course, should we put it in? Uh, yes, yes, anything and everything you've done, Obviously, that's related to your uh, your goals. Uh, put it in. So if you're a web designer and you took a pizza baking course, doesn't it's not really relevant. Don't maybe don't put that one. Uh, but anything that's related to IT or tech, definitely put it in. Even things that got to do with like marketing, for example, right? Because uh, half of web design is is marketing, right? Making sure that people can actually find your website. So it, it's 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 that just shows that there's there's no limit if it's even remotely related to your um your business or your goals put it in if we watch a youtube video on how to do something should we put that on as well <laughs> okay maybe maybe not i mean okay it, it depends right uh if you've watched a youtube video and you've uh, absorbed the skills you can put that skill in your skill section but just make sure you're you practice on it so you're not actually false advertising um uh, but I, a lot of youtubers that put these course uh, these these tutorials up or, or the bigger ones they'll have a, a website where there's a full course version of it and at the end you get a certificate so if you do one of those then you can put it in your uh, in your um certificates section on your profile show that you actually completed a, a little mini course on it let's just say that uh, if i learn java by watching youtube videos can i put this up 
Absolutely, right? Provided that you you did in fact get some of those skills, uh, and you didn't just like put it on two times speed zone hours and and just complete the the four hour crash course on Java like that. If you actually studied it and you you practiced, you implemented, and you you're confident that you actually have some of that skills, put it right. Uh, don't don't short sell yourself. If you took the time to learn a skill. It only may, it's only fair that you get to you know brag about it a little bit. Tofi says literally write a short post about what you learned and link the video in your post. Yes, very 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 important when it comes to posting on LinkedIn. Write the articles if you're wondering about what kind of things you should write about. That's exactly what you should be writing about. One is your, your your general findings and views on certain things, but more importantly, your personal learnings uh, and your learning journeys. Uh, write those down, put it in there. Uh, it's also beneficial for people who are learning themselves. You, know, you write a review on a specific course or, or what you think about learning a specific technology. It's going to help people. It's going to, it's valuable content and valuable content always has a way of bringing traffic to your page. So definitely take that up. That's a that's an excellent suggestion, Tofi. Uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, Daniel asks, if there are a million people with the same skills, how can you stand out from the others? Do we just have to follow the guidelines you gave us today or is there something more to this? Just follow those guidelines. So make sure your your profile is of a high enough quality and then just make sure that you are actively using your profile uh, and engaging and networking with people. That's really all you can do. And yeah, there are a lot of uh, other profiles and skills out there, but you know, something my, my grandfather who both me and my father learned a lot of business from, you know, my grandfather was a great businessman. He used to always tell us that, there's always room for one more because, you know, going into business, every single person has that little bit of anxiety that, you know, there's already so many people doing this. Why is mine going to work? You know, is it even worth getting into? So he would always say, there's always room for one more. Uh, and that just basically means it gets started and it works. And, you know, an example of this, um, well, two weekends ago, I went fishing with uh, my uncle and my cousins. And this was about like, you know, six, seven in the morning. Uh, yeah, about seven in the morning, we just passed this small little town uh, and we uh, went in to get some, you know, just some refreshments, some drinks, some snacks for the day. And literally right next to each other, there was this big supermarket, you know, a, a big chain. And next to it, there was a small little spaza stores, right? And so you would think that the spaza stores would be completely overlooked because there's this, chain right there it's a huge store it could have everything you want but it was the opposite that was true you know which was something that we even joked about and laughed at on the days like the small store decided to open right ne next to the big store and generally you would think that's a bad decision for the small store but the small guys was he was fine right <laughs> he, he had uh, lots of customers inside he had lines at the at the, the cashier's desk so it just shows just put in the effort, make sure your profile is of a good enough quality, make sure you're active and the business and everything else will, will definitely come. And how will people know if someone is lying about their skills on their LinkedIn profile? Yeah, uh, Unati hit it on the head through the interview or through the quality of the work that you produce, right? So if you say that you're a full stack Java expert and then someone hires you to develop or work in their team as a Java developer and you actually don't know anything about Java, they're gonna know, right? So in the interview, they'll ask some questions that you won't have the answers to, or you maybe could ace the interview and then get into the actual position and be completely lost, right? And that's gonna be some bad, bad reputational damage for you. So yeah, don't don't lie about that. So it's uh, yeah, I mean, it it could be possible that you find yourself in in a job that you not qualified for, but generally there's there's some checks, there's some things that they're gonna ask, or you know maybe they'll request to see some of your projects and they'll catch you out that way. <laughs> Uh, 
again, all right, Tofik with another eight year tip. Um, if a certificate is not given, will the project prove that you learned the skill? 110%. Uh, people want to see what you can do. And if the certificate isn't going to be there to prove it, the project will be even write an article or do a little video about it and, and share it. Uh, might not get a lot of views right away, right? But months later, you're applying for a job, someone goes and they're looking at your profile, and they'll see that there, and you'll be glad that you have that there at that moment, because that could have, could be the the make or break um the make or break uh, item for them. But how will uh, how will people know that you were actually the one that built the project and not somebody else? I guess I mean they, with LinkedIn, there's no real way to to verify that. It'll again just come down to uh the next steps, you know, the interview and the skill levels. There are ways, obviously, of of scamming people, but that's not very that's not an ethical thing to do. You shouldn't take credit for things you haven't done or claim to know things that you, you don't know. Uh. You know, in, in business in general, there's there's a lot of ethics involved. When you get in business, you'll find that there's a lot of ways that you can lie and cheat your way around people. But look, do business the way you want business to be done to you, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's, that's, that's our philosophy. So just treat people well, and in turn, you will probably be treated well uh, as well. You definitely, yeah. There's uh, William says that there's there's people who do this. There are there are some very very scummy people out there that do some some terrible terrible things. Um, but yeah, I guess from our from our side, you just have to be good at identifying it. So if you are gonna hire someone or interview someone for a specific role be aware of these things so you can vet them out properly. It's, it's actually good to ask these questions because you're aware of the possibilities and what people might might try with you. So being aware of it is first step towards making sure it never happens to you. Okay, guys, um, we leave it there for today. Uh, went quite a bit over time this, uh, this episode and we still didn't even cover everything that I wanted to cover in as much detail. Um, but I hope that you guys still enjoyed this, uh, this session. Uh, I hope you benefited from it. And I'm going to give you guys homework this time. I want you guys to go and uh, polish up your LinkedIn profiles. I'm going to actually go and do the same. Uh, and then we'll connect with each other and network with each other and give our all of our profiles a boost from there. So uh, before next week, Wednesday, have your LinkedIn profiles all polished up and nice. If you want advice, consult with your students or you can come and uh, your fellow students or come and consult with us. So yeah, you have one week to work at it, myself included. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it hopefully again next week. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the week. And I'll see you again soon. Bye everyone.